Hi, hi everyone. Welcome to this week's edition of the Carvel Community Meeting. Just a reminder when you are attending these meetings to read and abide by our code of conduct, which is listed out here in the agenda. We record all these meetings and they're uploaded to our Carvel YouTube playlist. Uh, if you're watching this from home and you would like to participate live, we meet every Monday at 11.30 a.m. Pacific time. <clears throat> uh, another opportunity that we do offer our community for a way to engage with us is also the Carvel office hours. So we meet every second and fourth Thursday at 11.30 a.m. Pacific time. And that's just another opportunity for you and others to engage with the maintainers if you have um, something that needs more in-depth in help on regarding the tool suite or if there's some feedback that you want to bring up with the maintainers, uh, please feel free to attend those office hours or the community meeting. We would love to, to hear from you. Also, when you're attending, we, we ask that you put in your name in any organization that you are representing. This is a way for us to keep track of who is attending so we can make sure we're keeping those community or the communication channels going and um, can continuously reach out with any help you may need. If you have any um, discussion topics or any triage help needed, please feel free to put that down here at the bottom of the agenda and, and we'll get to it after we go over the week's plans. We just have a few announcements, some of the ones um, we brought up in the last meeting, but uh, some pretty exciting stuff. We're hiring. We have three different roles open here. Um, we have a software engineer role, which is a, re a returnship. And that just means if you're, you know, you've been out of work due to the caring of a loved one or, or um, you know, you're, you're a caretaker of some sort and you're ready to return to work, this is an opportunity that we're offering you. Uh, to come join the team. Uh, we also have another uh, software engineering role here available. And then the third one available um, that is particularly based in India. Last announcement we have is a small bug fix uh, to image package. Does anyone want to go over this particular item? I can do it. It's when image package copy targets a registry and that registry returns back a non-404 to represent an image not found. It used to fail, but now it's not gonna fail. It's gonna succeed. It's gonna be like 40143 means also means image not found. Oh, well, simple enough. <clears throat> Thanks, Dennis. Um, okay, and on to status updates. Aaron, do you want to take over from here? Sure. All right, so let's see. Uh, we'll start with schemas. Uh, anyone want to share about schemas for the past week? Themes are we're doing some bug fixing, uh, some improvements in some of the air messaging in how they're laid out and the information they provide, and then um, documentation. We've also been running some usability tests. Um, and, um, and we published uh, an initial set of documentation. And um, yeah, so we do have a few slots left if you're interested in sneaking into that usability test, getting a chance to kick the tires on schema uh, in a guided way. Uh, it's been pretty fun doing that. And um, so we're, we're planning on wrapping that up this week and responding to the, the feedback that we get around that. We've already gotten some, some pretty good feedback already. And um, and yeah, so like we're really we're like basically turning that that making that last turn. We'll we'll look at it when we talk about what our plan is for this week to uh, to finally get schemas to uh, general acceptance, general availability. So looking forward to it. Cool, thank you. Uh, and then on the cap controller side, uh, still working on the package manager API. It's currently the 
code freeze period. So focused on stability, squashing some bugs, some refactoring, that sort of thing. Uh, Daniel or Eli, anything else that y'all want to add? All righty, and then image package, uh, as Dennis mentioned earlier, we, we did cut a new release last week. Um, anything else you wanna share, Dennis? Yeah, um, so just a couple of PRs in review. Um, one of them is to speed up the pool performance to leverage the location OCI. Joao's gone through a review um, cycle and like there's been some minor reviews left, but it looks good, I think, we just agreed that he had some really good ideas to do some bigger refactors down the line after this PR gets merged, which is gonna be like just shifting code around and maybe getting rid of structs and, and whatnot. So that's something we're gonna pick up after this PR gets merged. Also the second PR that's in review is about running end-to-end -end tests against Harbor registry. And so that's, that's currently in progress. Cool, thank you. Uh, anything else, any other announcements or updates people want to share before we get into the backlog? All right, let's dive in. So let's see. So we'll start out, uh, oops, how about we filter the idea? I clicked on something. Selection mode, you want to clear that? Oh, you got it. Cool. Uh, so we'll start filtering on schemas. Is there anything new to discuss today? I don't think we've talked about the documentation stories. Um, I think it's worth at least touching on those. We're, we're making our way through our bug list here. So this one is about clarifying there are really two experiences around schema, depending on who you are and what you're doing. So if you're somebody who is has picked up YTT in order to do some templating, we'll call you a co configuration author. And that person, their experience is about when I go to extract a variable out of one of my templates and I go to declare it somewhere, what does that look like? And for someone who is on the receiving end of that, maybe they want to use someone else's YTT library and incorporate it into theirs or what have you, they're going to want to provide overrides for what are the defaults that are defined by schema. So what's important and what they need to look at, what they need to understand are slightly different. And so this is about making some changes in the overall documentation experience in order to help people recognize who they are and place some hints of where they probably would, some crumbs of where they would look in order to get the information they need. So this is a little bit open-ended, uh, admittedly, but this example here is an attempt to try and at least sketch what could be some intended scope. So for example, uh, rightfully and understandably, like right now, our description of our experimental schemas is below data values because today data values is the GA way of defining and overriding values. But as we go to make schema the default way to declare variables, it makes more sense for those to be, for a schema to be a little bit more prominent. So that would move above in the left nav. And then we could, within the using schema page, which is an, a page that introduces you to the feature, it's meant to be a lightweight introduction, helping someone identify who, who they are within that page um, can help direct people to the right spot, perhaps even into the reference material. And then inside the reference material, which is that next page, um, 
pointing folks back to the overview so they can kind of identify themselves. And having a couple of sections, and this was suggesting a few sections that might be specific to one or the other protopersona's uh, world. So the idea is to try and speak to, to both of these folks, these, these groups of people, and try and help them find their way through the documentation. Any questions, comments? Yeah. I think I saw it in the list of priority, but this story comes after we remove the flag. That's right. Yeah. So what what's preventing the what's gating our removing the flag, the experimental enable experimental schema, is that the feature is ready. And with feedback from our usability tests and our own exploratory testing that we're doing, uh, that's what's giving us confidence that we could say now this can be the default experience and uh in this right now we've prioritized said hey we don't have to wait for the documentation to be perfect this is about m improving that experience we'll probably get additional feedback about things here and there and we'll want to make improvements but these are ones that are obvious right now yeah if someone feels differently if you feel like we should make that switch um yeah, def definitely love feedback about that too. But this is just sort of like how we've been thinking about it so far. Okay. So um, let's throw some points on this to see that we're thinking in the same ballpark here. I was wondering, just I thought was, what about the playground? Like this is really good but then like people usually like to use the playground to, to experiment and iterate on what they learn is that something that will be available for folk to do on the playground eventually or yeah um we don't have stories written yet for that but yeah there there's actually quite a bit that we want to do there But this is the intent here is just to try and make that incremental improvement to being introduced to the feature. Cool. Didn't mean to jump the gun. Were there other, any other questions before we take points? Uh, is this meant to replace any kind of navigation that we have on the on the documentation, or not really? It's just to add another section to um, to the documentation itself um the, the intent here is for there to be a slight slight improvement there so in terms of navigation this first bullet is suggesting hey for example make sure that schema comes first in the left nav left nav is that what you mean when you say navigation uh like generally like on the on the page it's just like we're gonna add the using schema on top of it and that is it, right? Do we already have like any documentation for schema? Sorry, I don't, I don't know. Oh. Yeah, yeah, we do, we do. Yeah, so the, these two pages exist. This item using schema is in the left nav right now. It's below using schemas. So yeah, all the all this exists and is published currently. And then these are meant to be improvements to those existing uh, documents. And so we should also remove the reference to the flag, right? Because as Carrie asked, like this is after the the removal of the flag, right? So we should also change the using schema to make sure that we do not talk about the experimental flag anymore. Yeah, and that's actually part of that removing the flag story. It actually has a, a doc. Yep, cool. Yeah, it's good. I'm loving this. Appreciate the the thoughtful review here. This is great. So to your point, Joao, this th notice it says, for example, as opposed to this is the acceptance criteria. So for so you might consider, hey, are there other places where we might tell somebody here, uh, declare your variables in 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 a data values file where 
might be easy enough just to throw a pointer back to like the using schemas page. Uh, that that'll improve the experience even more if you did something like that. Uh, so if there are like little lightweight, like very inexpensive ways of, of sort of improving that overall feel of hey schema are the way to you you declare your data values, um, then that's sort of the spirit of this. Do we have any section of examples for YTT or are they all part of the playground? No, there are there are additional examples in in the repo. Yes. In the repo. Have, mm -hmm. So yeah, so if you were to for example to clone down or or download a copy of YTT, uh the the Carvel YTT uh GitHub repo, there'll be an examples directory. And in there not in addition to all the stuff you see in the playground, you'll also see uh, situational specific examples as well. Um, so, and Carrie's added a couple of the examples around schema uh, in those examples. But nothing directly on the website, right? Everything like all the examples are are going to be there on the on the repository, Git repository. Okay. Yes, it's currently. Is that right, Kerry? So I'm not sure I understand. Okay. Just wanted to make sure like that when we're like doing these changes, if there are like examples that would make sense to change also on the website, that would be done also on this on this uh, story, maybe since we're like making it more preeminent. But yeah, cool. <laughs> This is great, that kind of thinking. Okay, all right, well, let's think about what level of effort we think would go into this kind of work. Okay, one, two, three. Okay, three ones and two twos. Why on earth did you throw two, Dennis? I, I could have gone over one. Um, I don't know. I was just like, just thinking about the different personas and, you know, giving a thoughtful, you know, good explanations as to how schemas can be used for those personas. Um, it seemed like it could, could be a two. I don't know, but I could also go down to a one. Cool. Yeah. I, I find complexity in words <laughs> and then, uh, I think there'll be just enough of like just the base like if i had like i don't know if uh i was about to say if i had the text ready but that's not true but like even just sort of working on just literally just just this list and not thinking too much about it i felt like a point worth of work personally in terms of overall complexity all right I pointed a one and it was a larger one, but the reasoning behind this is last week I worked on one of the schema documents, uh, documentation docs that's up for review right now of the migration guide from using data values to using schemas. And that's mainly pointed at authors um, in specific. So I think that could be called out and described better. So that's like another thing that we could add to this list. But mm. at the same time, when I read through the schema documentation, like the words that are there and the two documents that currently exist are really good. And if you look at the way that data values is kind of integrated into the rest of our documentation, I think that's a really great example of how you might kind of approach this story. And so with there being a little bit of prior art, and having these kind of documents in hand. And I'm assuming that you won't be making any new documents from scratch in this story. I find it a little bit easier than starting from a fresh slate or blank slate. That's a great call out that there's prior art around to leverage. Yeah, great thinking, Gary. Cool, anything else about this story? Okay, rough consensus was a one. Just like an off-topic question, did we end up deciding 
to change our documentation to a newer format? And did we do that already? I know it only has been two weeks since I since I left, but you're wondering this what changed. <laughs> um, uh, what what new format? Sorry, help help me. We talked about changing the way the the repository looks like, the Git repository looks like, to contain like the versions and so on, as, as like has been like any work done on that um, particular area, or not really. No, we, no. We, the proposal is totally accepted, cleared, but we just haven't like come up with stories around that work and prioritized it. Yeah, yeah. So we're still on one version, the latest. Yeah, good question. Cool. Do we want to talk about the next documentation story now, or? Yeah, well, while our heads heads in the game like that, and this one should be relatively straightforward. Cool. Oh. Cool. So, if you haven't seen it, there's a page that's meant to be a detailed overview of, as as it says, how YTT works, and. So today it mentions. Um, uh, actually, if we can we pull up? Is there a link? There's not even a link in the story. Is there? Yep, that works. So there's this picture here that's meant to help people like bootstrap their mental model around how YTD is operating. So there's this piece here where we'd like to mention schema documents alongside data values and uh, and then a couple of sections down in here just to augment the story with the addition of schema. Do we have the sources of these images or do we need to build them again from scratch yeah, to no, we do. increase them? Yeah, we do have the source of the images. Been meaning to cover that in like a, a tech forum on. Um, there's actually not only is there a source, it's in a Miro, but there's actually a, a, a script. I'll call it handy, a handy script that when you export an image out of your Miro, it has the path name, and you run the script, and it places it into the documentation directory, the right spot. Um, so yeah, we should. We should cover that together in our tech forum this week. You do not have to come up with new, you don't have to recreate those, no. Cool, anything else? Okay, let's vote on a level of effort. All right, one, two, three. So one, yeah, all uh, uh, would it make sense to talk about like the plain YAML data values on that same schema, or are we just saying that whatever like the data values can have two formats, but they are both data values? Because since we are like changing the image, right? Yeah, right now, I I I think we've been. In my head, we've been holding off on making a big splash about the data values file flag until we can really tackle uh, the overall experience. So there's work to do in the playground um, and and uh, in, in quite a bit of documentation to work to do. So at this point, in order to avoid creating confusion, will still refer to data value overlays as data values, like, and that's fine. And that will actually continue to work. Uh, we're not misleading anybody by, by doing that. Um, but yeah, I think we wanna sort of in one fell swoop, make that shift into pushing the data values flag, the data values file flag into the forefront. Um, uh, we wanna, it's almost like changing the side of the road you drive on in a sense, in terms of messaging. So we'll, we'll, we'll likely want to try and do that as a blitz. Would it make sense for us to do some sort of like a blog post or something for that, where you can just 
talk about all that information. Yes. Yes, that's a fabulous idea. Good part of that blitz. So part of the reason why I just hang out and let a little silence happen is that like Joao gets to think and then he starts asking questions about really cool ideas that we can do. So part of the magic. Who wants to write the blog post? Uh, I was like, I have the ideas. But... <laughs> I totally help, but next week I'll be off again. So um... <laughs> I see how you play. <laughs> We'll, we'll get that in as like official work, Nancy. That'll be, that'll be part of the blitz. Yeah. Great idea. Cool. Cool. So that, that gives us, um, quite a bit of runway there. Oh, let's see. And then, so non schemas work that is new. Um, so there is one thing that I dragged over, which, uh, I think, do we have anything else on our agenda today? No topics, no help. Um, so this, I, I added in as kind of like a placeholder story. Let me open up an originating issue that was being asked. So this is for, for cap controller. Um, and VJ had reported that when deploying packages with image package bundles, that a container uh, tag is replaced with SHA-256, or the reference itself, um, when it's being deployed to a pod deployment daemon set. And this is challenging because when looking for a, a human readable uh, tag of a container, uh, you know, it's, it's not available, requiring him to go look into the images YAML and uh, retrieve that information. So I'm, I'm bringing this up now in the sense of determining if there is work that we need to do, I guess, within kbuild or image package to make this happen, um, as this is one of those features that just kind of spans tools. Uh, and then Eli and Daniel, I'm not sure if either of y'all have had a chance to look at this issue yet to see if if you have any thoughts as to whether you know where I guess the, the solution lies but I figured since right now since we don't have any other stories to discuss that maybe we could just have a bit of a discussion to figure out how we want to slice this so like just by looking at what you have there there is there are stories that are related to this on the image package side. That is the uh, there's a, a story about the describe command for a bundle, right? Oh, there you go, Jorge already put that there. So that would be like one thing. Mm -hmm. And then on the cable side, we would have to save some sort of like tags or like the original name of that that cable found in an annotation and that gets saved into the image images log file and that will be transported by image package so like that part would be more or less covered so there are like two changes one change at the cable level and one big change at the image package level from there i'll leave it to cap controller people to <laughs> No, to tell us if there's like any change on their side in order to surface any of this. Because I don't, I don't think that you want to have the, the tag on the, on, the, on the YAMLs, right? On the daemon sets and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, this is probably just mostly the K-Build. I don't even think image package really. As long as cable puts the annotations in the lock file and then adds them to the resource and it does a replace on the other end, it should be everything we need. Okay. Yeah, I, I would consider the image package describe or inspect feature to be 
separate from from this overall i understand that the this came up as like a nice to have um but it sounds like to meet their immediate use case that maybe there isn't work that needs to be done in image package does that sound right we ignore the inspect command mm -hmm. there shouldn't be any work because the image package transports the images log file the way whichever tool generates it generates it so it just picks it up and just passes it on so you'd be you'll have that all that information available cool um so i did take a pass at drafting a story here and my understanding is similar to what, what y'all just shared. So this K-Build story is really about capturing the, the source tag in the image package lock file. Um, I'll give y'all a moment to read through this, but it's primarily just providing context from that previous story that we just looked at. Does this feel actionable enough that people would be able to pick this up or would you want to have further definition where's the source of the information for the source annotation like how do i know what to put there um i believe you'd be able to get it when you're retrieving the Im the information about the image itself. So when you're pulling, or I guess when you're resolving and resolving. In, in K builds. Yeah. Uh, there's a caveat here. That is, if you, like there are some, the K build has this ability to find a random string that could say like bananas. And if it is image colon bananas, it will find the name bananas and it will replace it using any kind of rules that you have with the image that you care about. And I doubt that we want to save bananas there. Um, so how are we going to do this? Like how, how is this going to work when we have not uh, an, an image, but like a string that will represent an image on, on the configurations. Did, did it make sense the, what I was saying? Are you asking where the annotation goes? No, 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 no. What I'm asking is, so like, for example, like you have a YAML that contains your pod definition, right? And in the place of the image field, in the image field, you can put an image, like a full flown name, a full blown image with a SHA. You can put an image with a tag, or you can put the random string on it. And then configure KBuild, so with a configuration file, saying that that particular string is going to be changed into. Uh, as into like a different um into a different image right yeah you define a pre-resolve yeah or right. it can be pre-resolved or not you, can, you just say like this is the image that i want you to replace with got it replace it with and right. th this is a good thing for for example like if you have three daemon sets that use exactly the same image and you don't want to specify the image and you want just to say like this is a string and just copy the string in the, those three places and then you just have to change the configuration in one file uh so that can be uh like that's the thing that kville does okay and then so what, what was your question can you repeat your question then again so given like this what is what are you going to save in this source uh tag or it's not a tag, it's like this annotation. There's an annotations field that contains like a list of annotations. And what are we gonna save it? What, what are we gonna save there? Are we gonna save the string? Are we gonna save the resolve the image in these cases? Are we gonna, or the pre-resolve uh, field? Kbuild already has some behavior where it adds annotations to the resources when you just do a resolve. 
curious if we can just save whatever it puts there in the images lock file as well and then put it on when you read in an images lock and do a replace. My understanding is the string that you're talking about the, the table carvel dev slash ID. Yes. Hmm. I wonder if we're maybe missing information here. So are we thinking that like this annotation would already show up on your deployed whatever? I don't think we do that right now, right? Not there's on the deploy. Flag. There's a there's a flag to include that. No, like like this ID is gonna show up in all images locks. So this information is already there. So what you see on the produced, it's already there. So in the end, that information that he's asking for is already there in that format. But it's not it's not on the the resource itself. So if we look at like the next snippet just below that is the manifest and it doesn't have that ID in there anywhere. And I think I think the request here is, could you attach to this deployment or daemon set or whatever it is, this at least that annotation? That's, that's does 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 Kbuild have that capability though? I think it does not. Does it add annotations on? It doesn't have any knowledge about uh, yes, Kubernetes. It does. does it have if any you... knowledge about Kubernetes? Yeah, if you just do a plain resolve with no lock files, it'll put information about like the source of the image as an annotation on the Kubernetes resources. So it's just sort of like adapting that ability to instead of adding those annotations directly, read them from an images lock file and then put them on the resource. And then when creating the images lock file, add them to the images lock annotations. Uh, so do y'all think we can piggyback on that KBuild Carvel Dev ID? Because if we do, we can have this. This is like a different story. So if we if we need to save extra information, there's more to do. If we don't have to save more information, and you just need to print it out in the correct place that KBuild is already doing, that's a different thing. Yeah, Aaron, if you go to the home page for KBuild and not the docs, and then scroll down, there's like an example of what it looks like. So here there's this KBuild images annotation that it adds. Is there like any preference on where, what the annotation would look like and what would be the name of the annotation for that? Um, annotation where, I think we have two, two different annotations we're talking about, Kate's annotations or images lock. So like images lock, I think we already assessed there is nothing for us to do. Because we all we can piggyback on the Carvel dev slash ID, KBuild Carvel dev slash ID annotation. So that information is already on the images log file. So there's nothing that needs to happen on that side, unless we want to use a different one. But let's assume we don't right now. So that information is already present for KBuild. We just need to put that information into the YAML that is going to be used to uh, add to like to configure the pods the deployments and uh, demon sets and so on. Mm -hmm. 
I would just use this. Like to me, it may be easiest if we just, instead of piggybacking on ID, leverage the functionality that's already in kbuild to write this images annotation into the images lock and then read it and write it into the resource. Cause then we're already using things like behavior kbuild already knows how to do. Like we can just write this slash images annotation directly into the annotations field of the images lock when we're creating it. And then when we're doing the replace, read it directly from the images lock and put it directly onto the resource. Like we don't have to care about what's inside of it or anything. Like, Is that, is that images Kubernetes resource annotation? Uh, does that, does that show up only if you have source information in your lock file? Or is it just putting, cause that's, that's no. the only, that's the only example I've ever seen of that. This, I think if you run this exact example with, I mean, this doesn't have any sources or anything. It's just a resolution. I think if you run this exact thing, you'll get the annotations. Okay. Unless we've regressed in the past here. Annotation. So Eli, your suggestion is for Kbuild to write this and a new annotation on the images log file that contains this metas on it and then on the flip side of the coin when it reads the image lock it will read this information the metas and it will put it into the output yeah yeah i think that, to me that would be easiest because it's already sort of doing that we just need to add the ability to do it with our lock file. Cool. Well, going, I guess, back to the story. So this one is now what I would consider to be scoped incorrectly. And I guess it's maybe just change the title for right now. Um, would be a good way to capture this work. Capture image meta information in image package log file. Can metadata or something like that. I don't. Yes, not sure. Not sure. I don't know. I don't know how to call that piece of <laughs> that structure there. <laughs> like a little caveat here, because the metas are the metas for all the images that are part of a particular deployment. KVL will have to be smart enough to only add the correct meta for the correct image. So if you have three images, add the meta that is related to image one, only on image one, on image two, only on image two, image three, image three. And then on the other side, it needs to be able to get the three together. Again, if it needs to be. I also just want to say that this is like largely a suggestion. If it's easier to just use ID or like original string or something as the annotation. I think that satisfies what they're asking for, but just thought it might be easier to use the existing code. It seems like the point is like, can you make this human readable and like make it obvious from where, what were the origins of this image? Like what version is it? And it seems like the metas covers that nicely. It may not be like literally like here's the here's a version annotation. This tells you exactly what that is, but it definitely tells you like oh this this was the result. Um, it basically makes it possible you don't have to go look up that SHA in 
a separate file, you just look in the same resource. It's probably good enough. Saving the method is going to be harder than if we can do this with the IDs. Because as I was saying, when we generate the metas, we generate the metas per file, right? Like each file or be better, each resource in Kubernetes has its own set of meta information for that only serves for the particular images on that resource, right? So KBuild would have to be smart enough to store this information, not per resource, but per image in images lock on the images lock side. And then when it's reading the images lock, we'd have to read this information as the metadata information for the image. And then the rest would, would just work because it is just working right now. But there's there's like this step that could make it harder. I think what we can do here is capture like maybe the complexity of this and leave it to whoever is implementing this to see if there's like a, which one of the two ways it's like better or if that makes it more readable. I don't know. Yeah, I was kind of keying off of that part in, in the quote, like back in the story, where it says, um, if this is a challenge for serviceability, I need to figure out which tag of a container is deployed. Um, so it, I, I, was re I was envisioning in my head that somebody's like literally looking at deployed resources and looking to see like they do a, a kubectl get uh, YAML format, and so they're looking at at one resource. So that's why I thought this was suitable, but maybe I'm misunderstanding something. That will still work, right? We're talking about the transport aspect of this information because this information needs to be transported via the images lock, right? So let's the output in terms of Kubernetes resources is going to be the same. So you'll have that those metas, everything will be fine. The problem is that when you're generating the images lock, you need to store the meta information separately for each one of the images, right? So like you have image one, it will only have the meta information for image one, the image two, and you'll have only the meta information of image two and so on, right? So KBuild would have to learn how to split that if it's not yet split. And then afterwards, it will need to read it from in the images lock, and it will need to learn that the meta information for each image is going to be in each annotation, right? And then afterwards, I assume that it's going to be just, it just works, right? right? And it will show it as, as it is right now on the web page. So I like the idea of maybe estimating complexity on this and then maybe leave it to the folks that implement this to, to move it forward. Um, are folks comfortable pointing? Cool, Let's see a few thumbs up. Um, also, I know we haven't done a ton of work in KBuild, so if you want to abstain, that's fine. So pointing three, two, one, shoot. You got three twos and one three. Would anyone like to sh share why they voted their way? So I voted a two, one for unknown complexity that might arise, right? And I voted the other point was to, I th I'm hoping that we already have all the structures in place. That would be just, I need to write it to, to disk. And then on the other side, I just need to, to read it from disk. So I'm assuming that that's like a one point. That's why I, I voted this as two points. And I'm assuming like the rest is already taken care of, like the full machinery that writes things on the resources already done as long as it comes in a particular format. So it's just like an adaptation layer that we are missing right now. Yeah, I pointed a three, that mapping between resources and images YAML. I mean, I guess it sounds kind of 
straightforward. Although I don't really fully understand everything that was discussed today. So maybe I should have abstained. Also, I don't have zero experience in K-Build. So like I just pointed for unknowns and I, that's why I pointed a three. I can go down to a two. Cool. Sounds like we have a rough consensus for two. It's a very good conversation. Um, cool. So that K-Build story itself comes in after an image package bug when looking at the, the backlog holistically. But that is all I plan to get through today. So I can pass it back to Nancy. All righty. Uh, well, thanks everyone for the discussion today. If you're watching from home, we do invite you to join us live for these community meetings. We meet every Monday at 11.30 a.m. Pacific time. And it's an opportunity for you to hear what the maintainers are working on for the week, um, things that they have been continuously working on. And then you can also bring up your own discussion topics or any triage help you may have. Additionally, we do have office hours, like I mentioned before in the this meeting, we have them every second and fourth Thursday of the month at 11.30 a.m. Pacific time. And that's uh, just a, another opportunity to go even more in depth on anything um, you wish to discuss with the team or if you need any help with, with some items. If you aren't able to make it to any of those uh, opportunities, we are available in the Kubernetes Slack public workspace in the Carville channel. And we also are on Twitter at Carvel underscore dev. And so we, we wish to, to hear from you. And you know we hope that you'll reach out and we'll be able to help you with anything you need. And with that, have a great week. Thank you.